Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. Next, Jenai with Sai. Uh, today I am starting a new series about NLP. So I'll, I'm, I, I, I'll definitely want to do the name of this series as a uh, NLP for everyone. And definitely I'm going to cover the NLP in a such a way so that doesn't matter whether the person is a technical, non-technical, but will understand the NLP. Don't worry if you don't know what is the long form of NLP. Just be a patient. We'll cover. But why I am doing this recording? The purpose is very simple. You know that nowadays generative AI is on hype. And the basic of this generative AI is the NLP. Okay. So it is very important to understand this NLP end to end once you understand then generative ai is just the, you can say the next step or i can say the advanced nlp technique but to understand advanced technique it's very important uh, the business people non business people or who wanted to uh, looking for to adopt the generative ai in their future career or in their business and as you can see nowadays everyone wanted all company wanted to use the generative AI. Even nowadays, most of the people use the chat GPT on their daily routine to make the work faster. So if you are doing this, if you understand the basic, it will be definitely a plus point uh, in their future roadmap. So before moving, let me uh, explain or note down what are the topics I'm going to cover so this is the first lecture in this series subsequently we will have the uh, another lectures okay so what are the topics i'm going to cover let's understand so first we will define nlp right let me change the color so that okay we will define the nlp and its task right once after that we will see some history of NLP then what are the different approaches to NLP then we will understand how NLP understand the language okay because language understanding is one of the main crux uh, in NLP um, then we will see then we will see the Syntax, structure, and semantics. Any language has these components. Okay, so we will see what are the syntax NLP uses. Once done that, we will see how language, right, can be used as a data. Earlier we know that we have structural database which has a rows, column, you know, and then the, it has a data but how the general language can be used as a data okay we will see some example then you will understand how we can use the language as data and finally we will touch upon the topic the ai for nlp right so these are the things i'm going to cover in today's lecture mostly all are theoretical but it is very important to understand to kick start the nlp if you're listening this first time okay let me go to the next point and we'll start the first point that is defining the nlp okay let's understand what is nlp so nlp stands for okay, not npp the nlp so n stand for natural l stand for language and the p stands for processing so nlp full form is natural language processing by the way this nlp is a field of ai is what is a field of ai it means artificial intelligence what is the work of this field it deals with the machines so that machine can understand the human language machine can understand the human language 
is the definition of NLP. Okay, let me repeat again so that so what is NLP? NLP stands for the natural language processing, it is a field of AI. What we are doing in this, we make sure that we deal with that this machine to understand the human language. Okay, how it is happening, how machine understand the human language, that is the next goal that I'll explain in upcoming lecture. But I hope you understand the the definition of NLP okay now when we say NLP it is not it has a when I say language it has a two parts one is a written English or written language and another is a spoken language now when I say language currently majorly we are focusing on English but don't worry it applicable to all type of language whether it's a English Japanese French Hindi or whatever okay but NLP is a field where it is capable to understand the written as well as spoken. If I give the example, then Siri in Apple devices, it is the best example of NLP. If I say written, the currently which is a hot topic, which is chat GPT, right? It understand the written. Now, how this is happening? It use some of the method in the background. So it, it uses the some linguistic capability plus statistical method and and then there are some machine learning model so when we combine all these okay these gives a machine capability to understand the language what are the linguistic computational linguistic power statistical method and machine learning model if you don't remember you can forget about this but what is the most important to remember this definition okay this definition what is NLP NLP is the natural language processing which helps or which deal with the machine to understand the human language this can be written or the spoken I hope now I as of now you are clear with the definition of the NLP okay now let's move to the second topic that is NLP task okay now what are the NLP tasks can be achievable so broadly there are the three main tasks the first is that understanding the structure language sorry for my handwriting but please bear with this understanding the structure of language okay second task is extracting meaning from language and the third task is a generating which is currently we are doing generating human like language okay so these are the broadly i can say the three main tasks in nlp so when i say understanding the structure of language means we are breaking down the component okay so whenever we have sentence those sentence will breaking down in the words okay phrases and the sentences okay so that when these sentences breaking down in these words and phrases we try to understand how the language is structured so this is the first task in the nlp second is the extracting the meaning from language now we structureize right we structure we understand the structure but what that sentence is saying that is the second task in the nlp that is the extracting the meaning from language and the third which is currently happening that is generating the human like language right whenever you are asking anything in the chat gpt write the uh, story for me or whatever task it's generating right so we want nlp to generate to generate fluent or grammatically correct or any stylish so these are the three major tasks in the nlp right i hope you understand the two things first the definition of nlp and the third second is the three tasks in the majorly i'm not saying these are the only but majorly the task in the nlp now let's move to the second part that is the Third, third topic that, that is the under okay 
Now, before moving to the third topic, let's try to understand these three tasks in a very much detail. Okay. As I mentioned, the first task of NLP is a understanding, understanding the structure of language. Correct. Structure of language. Now, how we can understand the structure for that? NLP do some kind of activities. The first major is called as a tokenization. What is is called as a tokenization. Now, what do you mean by tokenization? It will convert the sentence or it will convert the yeah, it convert the sentence into the individual words or phrases. Let's say I am watching a TV. I am watching a TV. Okay, so this is the sentence. So it will break down this sentence. It will splitting. So I can say tokenization is nothing but the splitting of text. Tokenization means what? Splitting of text. So when I split the text based on some criteria. Now don't worry. What are the criteria? There are a number of criteria is available as of now. But let's understand very basic. When I split the text is nothing but the tokenization. So this is this way. NLP can understand. Second way to understand is called as a part of speech, or in short, is called as a POS. What it is called? POS. POS means what? Identifying the sentence grammatically. We know that each language has some grammar associated with it, and those sentence has some noun, then verb. And then adjective majorly as currently we know the English globally. So let's focus on this. So when we convert this sentence in this, and when we try to identify, let's say I'm giving this sentence. So I wanted to identify which one is the noun in this sentence, which one is the verb in this sentence, and which one is the adjective in this sentence. If I able to find out this, then it is called as a part of speech tagging. So this is the task is also come under the NLP. The third, which is again one of the popular tasks of understanding the language, is called as the NER. Okay. Okay. The third is called as the NER. What is the full form of NER? Name Entity Recognition. What is called as a REM name entity recognition? So, what do you mean by name entity recognition? Let's say I am giving some sentence that um uh, again uh, there is a some one of the sentence and i wanted to identify one of the important words in it okay uh, for example um uh, i'm going to stadium to watch football match right here I wanted to identify which one what are the important information is available so stadium right stadium is a something I can say uh, it specifies the uh, kind of location football is a something related to the game okay so if there is a task to identify or maybe uh, what what kind of match Okay, if I want to identify something, the information from my data, what are the name of, what are the people or organization or the location, right? And the dates, if I want to extract this information from the sentence, then I'm using this technique called as a NER technique, called as a name entity recognitions. Okay, I want to recognize what are the entity available in the sentence, okay, or in the language, so that those data I can use my further. Uh, further activity or further action so this is the third activity come under the understanding the structure of the language the next is called as a syntactic analysis okay in this same something coming as a just a second let me just pull up the next is called as a syntactic analysis now when i say syntactic analysis means is nothing but the parsing nothing but what parsing 
so i want to understand the grammatical structure of the sentence and wanted to understand the relationship between the words and premise phrases okay syntactic analysis means if i saying some of the sentence if there is a one sentence okay what is the relation between the different sentence okay what are the relation between sorry not sentence grammatical relation not the meaningful grammatical relation between the words okay this is called as a parsing okay so these are the major i can say uh, task coming under the understanding the structure of the language so let me revise the first is tokenization means splitting of text uh, sorry splitting of sentence into the text it's called as a tokenization the second task is the part of speech tagging where we are converting the sentence into the uh, uh, identifying the grammatical stuff that is which is the noun which is the verb or adjective or etc etc this is called as a part of speech tagging the third is the nr that is the name entity recognition so we wanted to understand what are the entities available in the sentence call as a name entity recognition and then syntactic analysis so basically here we are focusing on the uh, grammatical stuff okay uh, like what is the relation between the different different words so this is called as a syntactic analysis okay i hope you understand the uh, this first task majorly when i say broadly classify understand structure this is called as a first the second is called as the extracting the meaning from language so let me wrote down the second classification we say that extracting meaning from language so when i say extracting the meaning from language the first major task come here is called as a sentiment analysis called as a sentiment analysis now you heard about the uh, one of the something called as a movie review this is one of the toy data set available for who wanted to do the first level of nlp task okay so there are some movie review imdb movie review right these are the data set easily available on the internet some review is given uh, by the audience and there is a data set whether the review is a positive or the negative right or it's a neutral okay so when when i wanted to understand the sentiment okay then this task coming under the sentiment analysis the second task coming under this is called as a text summarization what is that text summarization right so i am giving some text and i want to summarization of that text so this come under the text summarization right so we want to concise summary the third task is called as a topic modeling what is called topic modeling so what is topic modeling topic modeling means i wanted to understand so let's say i am giving some text and wanted to understand uh, which topic this uh, data is related to okay what is the main topic is uh, discussed in this paragraph okay so this is called as a topic modeling the fourth is that natural language <coughs> natural language uh, inference or it's short it call as a nli natural language inference so what what will cover in the natural language inference we want to determine whether the given hypothesis is entailed by the piece of text for example let's say there is a sentence the sun is shining let's say the sun is shining does it intel the hypothesis it is daytime it is daytime so there is a one phrase one sentence we have given the sun is shining and we check whether the this sentence is saying that whether it is a daytime or not okay so we wanted to determine the hypothesis what we want to determine hypothesis if this is something we are able to determine okay from the sentence or we wanted to calculate the inference okay then this task coming under the natural language 
inference nl i to determine the hypothesis okay so these are the again i can say the majorly uh, when i say extracting the meaning right yeah extracting the meaning right from the language so this is something come into the picture so let me revise again so when i say meaning then these are the broadly classified tasks one is a sentiment analysis second is the text summarization third is the topic modeling and the last is the natural language okay now let's move to the next topic Uh, the next is the extracting the sorry not extracting the next what is the next generating the human like language generating human like now when i say generating human like language means the first it is coming as a machine translation what is that machine translation so when i say machine translation means what simple we are translating the text from one language to another language the example is the google translator right mostly people use this google translator okay now there is a microsoft translator is also available when you convert the hindi to marathi marathi to english or whatever language you wanted to okay so we use machine to do this translation which is called a, this is also uh, coming from the generating human language next is the text generation okay for example in chat gpt you are asking to create generate the mail for my boss uh, you know to request for leave or something whatever right or generate the code okay or the scripts for this task this task coming under the text generation the third is the chatbot that is a simple example is the chat gpt right or there are many other gpt's model are available okay chat gpt or the gemini right or the llama 2 okay so these are the uh, chatbots are available right so these all are category fall under the generating the human like language okay i hope so you understand these tasks for the uh, generating okay so till now we have cover uh, what is nlp uh, then uh, we understand the uh, what are the different tasks cover in in the uh, nlp right so let's move to the next topic called as a natural language understanding okay natural language understanding okay so in natural language understanding we are focusing on what we are focusing machine to comprehending human language okay machine comprehending human language means let's say uh, we asking something to the machine right so we want uh, machine understand the meaning okay but in a such a way that that it understand the human way not the for example uh, whenever you are asking okay for example in the siri right okay we, uh, generally uh, children or alexa right they understand they are giving the response in a similar way how human is responding right generally in the nlp these are called as a virtual assistant what are they are called as a virtual assistant right so this is something comes under the natural language understanding okay so you when you ask anything to the alexa alexa will understand this is a request from human and accordingly it will act okay now there are also in nlp use cases there are many things are available okay uh, in natural language understanding second is the personalized experience Second is the personalized experience. Okay, so it will understand the user preference and the behavior 
and give the general recommendation okay for example when you are doing any shopping on amazon or any uh, website okay or netflix okay it will understand your behavior okay it will understand your behavior and give the product recommendation okay for example when you are searching something on google you will find that similar content coming as a ad when you are browsing facebook instagram youtube or any other places so similar recommendation it is getting so how this is getting this is because of the natural language understanding capability it is called as a personalized experience third is something called as a automated ticket support automated ticket supports now these are the something you can say mostly all of the uh, service provider is giving for example when you are ordering something on zomato or anything okay so first response you are getting from the virtual assistants okay and they are mature enough to answer your some very some extent okay how it is possible because of the natural language understanding capability okay so these are the some of the use cases uh, i'm giving uh, so that you can understand what is about the natural third fourth is a sentiment analysis that i already uh, explained earlier what is the meaning what sentiment uh, analysis right and then also there is a one use cases called as a automated this yeah, something fifth is called as a automated document review automated document review now in automated document review if you are giving some document it will do some kind of review right for example uh, plagiarism check okay these are possible what because of the automated document review or do some kind of document processing right and do some human review so this is possible because of the nlu that is natural language understanding the sixth use cases comes under the natural language understanding is smart search well as a smart search okay so smart search if there is a one there are two type right one is the keyword search and the smart search in the smart search what happen it will understand the intent behind that okay of our query and then deliver the more relevant result okay for example you wanted to search something related to the apple but when you are searching related to apple it will understand what is the intent whether user searching apple with respect to food or with respect to the mobile and accordingly it will generate the relevant content for you so this is called as a smart search earlier this was not available before the nlp but after the nlp that is natural language processing or i can say in between the natural language understanding this smart search has the great capability now you can see nowadays google review is improve a lot it is not just the keyword though few sentence now if you look at something there are few sentence are very similar in your general but now once you start the querying it will give the next search which is very close to what you intend for okay then seventh is the content moderation content moderation so just a second uh, yeah so when i say content moderation means the social media platform uses this nlu to identify the removal of harmful content right we were uh, we were saying that there are many harmful contents are publishing on the social media platform so to detect whether this content is harmful or not okay for that they are using this nlu technique okay so if you want to remove this harmful content we are using again nlu that is natural language use cases okay so i hope you understand what are the natural language use cases we have seen so let me do quick revision again let's do the quick revision what natural language use cases we have seen one is the machine comprehending okay so understand the human language and give the output 
that is example is a siri second is a personalized experience so product recommendation third is a automated ticket support okay you can say zomato or any other service center support chat or any bank has that then fourth is the sentiment analysis to understand the sentiment and then you respond to that fourth is the automated document review smart search which is intent based search quality and the content moderation content moderation means to check whether the content is good or bad so these all are come under the natural language understanding now let's uh, look at the next topic that is something which is related to the uh, natural language generation okay that is short form is a nlg natural language sorry not understanding generation so when i say natural language generation means it will generate the content it is not only limited to the understanding okay so these are the use cases comes under the natural language generation now what are the uh, available again that is the enhanced customer experience okay it will enhance customer experience for example uh, chat gpt okay it's a generation general uh, generation based use case okay it's not just to understand give the specific response but it is generate the response uh, the second is the data analysis data analysis and the reporting so it will do the analysis it will understand the report and do the forecasting as well okay and do the reporting as well okay so uh, mostly uh, i can say financial institute okay use or any other institute not i would say financial but mostly many institute use this natural language generation capability uh, to create the summarized text okay so they will share the most of the text available with them and they want to, to create the summarize so this is called as a data analysis and the reporting kind of use case next is the content creation i think no need to say something um, mostly people currently using this so this coming under the natural language generation use case then this is also used in the uh, education education field right to create the um, you know short short kind of or form kind of content or create the audio from the text okay uh, so these kind of also coming under this uh, natural language generation use case uh, then next is that machine translation we already see this in a previous uh, part in some time back the machine translation is also part of natural language generation uh, also there are government uh, and the public services uh, also use this uh, capability of natural language generation like um, in government they are using this summarization things even we can see that on railways uh, or in most of the public places uh, there is a translated uh, things available in the local language so for that they are using the machine translation okay google translate or any other service to convert the specific sentence into specific local language right so these are something about the we have seen about the um, natural language uh, processing what is natural language processing and what are the uh, different capabilities available in the uh, natural language understanding and natural language uh, generation so let's go ahead and uh, understand the next topic that is something called as a historical evaluation of nlp okay so before uh, going to further let's understand what happened earlier okay so in early days uh, there was one of the famous um, i can say person or scientist alan turing uh, who actually len turing actually he started the universal machine okay in 1949 okay alan turing 
in the 1949 he proposed something called, that machine called as a universal machine and it this universal machine has capability to mimic the human intelligence okay human intelligence so this was the first where the nlp start after that in 1954 uh, george town okay uh, G or yeah george town the ibm experimented okay and successfully demonstrated in 1984 okay and they developed that machine or computer can translate the russian language russian language to english language which language russian language to english language so this is second in 1954 who developed this ibm developed this okay then after that from 1960 okay 1960 to 1970 is the era where the rule based system is started this is the rule based system okay so in the rule based system uh, where computers rely on the complex and human crafted rules to process the rule means formal grammar models and the linguistic theory explore to understand the sentence structure and the word relation so they are saying these are the rules okay if these are the rules are there this is the way using the rule base they understand the grammar part of the sentence okay uh, there is no training or anything as such okay after 1970 after that um, let me after in 1980 to 1990 okay the statistical revolution happened mostly words started using the statistics okay statistical revolution happened and the rule based system was replaced by using this statistical model okay and this is something the change happened now this statistical model are used to analyze the large amount of data and specifically it identify the pattern in this data okay identify the pattern in the data you know that mostly statistical model are probabilistic based so it will understand what are the probability okay convert this into the probability in the language used Okay. Now you understand in 1980 rule based system it changes to the statistical to understand the probabilities in the languages. Probability the languages. Okay, so slowly, slowly after 18, 1980 to 1990, when we are coming to the 2000 until present. Okay, 2000 till present. the machine learning revolution happened means the statistical model replaced by the machine learning and slowly slowly the algorithms was developed the first uh, something called as a hidden markov hidden hmm in shortcut they also say the hmm hidden markov model after that that hidden markov model was then there are something called as a support vector machine or svm these are the game changer hidden markov model and the support vector machine are a game changer in the speech recognition okay to understand the speech and the text classification text classification so these are the model are game changer right after that this after this machine learning model comes that is deep learning model called as a rnn that is recurrent neural network after the rnn there are some transformer based model okay are mostly used in the all currently generative ai okay so transformer you can say the base in most of the generative ai even the gpt is also a transporter based transformer based model So this way, the history 
was revolved around the around the what nlp okay i hope you understand what how is the history started so let me just do the little bit revision so that it will uh, you know uh, you understand very well so started with the alan turing in 1949 he built the universal machine which mimic the human language after that ibm developed the translator in 1954 it will convert the russian language into the english from 1960 to 1970 the rule based system came they developed many rules to understand the language and this rule based system was replaced by the statistical model in 1980 to 1990 to understand the probability in the language and from 2000 to present this is taken by the machine learning model the first model hmm that is hidden markov model and the support vector machine this model mostly used for the speech recognition speech recognition and the text classification and slowly this model also replaced by the deep learning model like rna and lstm this way and currently the state of the model which all generative i use that is the transformer based model okay so we have covered the second part of our uh, today's topic now let's go to the next topic that is called as a approaches to solve the nlp so what we are going to cover today next topic approaches how we can solve the nlp problem okay approaches to solve lp problem okay the first way to solve this nlp problem is the heuristic method okay we'll see what are the heuristic method the second is the uh, machine learning method and the third is the deep learning method i already touched upon all this but we'll see uh, one by one slowly okay so when i say heuristic method heuristic method is nothing but the it is based on the rule based task okay when i say heuristic it is mean the rule based task okay so we require some system where we have dictionaries or we can say thesauries where we have the meaning of each and everything and we will build a knowledge base and on top of that we are building a nlp okay so you can say heuristic is a something the rule based system but it has a limitation what limitation we need a big big amount of dictionary which is practically impossible right so this is the method earlier they use uh, one of the great example of the heuristic method is a word net okay what is word net by the way the word net is the lexical database of semantic relation between the words okay uh, so in the word nest we have many things like we have synonyms antonyms hyponyms meronyms so different different relation like you know when i say baseball or sumo wrestling tennis okay if i say these kind of words so in word net it is already mentioned these words are related to the sports okay so when these kind of words come in a sentence using this rule based methodology you can say it is related to the sports okay so wordnet has been used for word sense disambiguation information retrieval automatic text classification automatic crossword puzzle generation okay and for your information this wordnet is maintained and owned by the cognitive science laboratory of princeton university 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 princeton no need to remember but just for your knowledge okay this princeton university uh, own this library okay this database wordnet database okay I hope you understand how this uh, word net is. Okay. Now, these rules and the heuristic plays very important role across the life cycle of NLP. Okay. So, what is the uh, advantage? It is a quick. Means you know that these are the uh, text available. You quickly check the relevant stuff and understand. But what happens once the language uh, is become crucial? okay it's more complex then this heuristic method will uh, fall it is not possible to uh, you know to understand because the language has a unlimited or you know this kind of data so when i say language um, let's understand the language bit 
because NLP is mostly based on the the language right so it is very important to understand the language first so language generally involves the three key aspect okay the first is the syntax uh, second the structure and the third is the semantic is the any language okay so when i say syntax syntax is nothing but the what is the grammatical rules right each language has some grammatical rule associated with so we need to understand what are the grammatical rule of that language then structure means what are the building block how this language is structure not i am not talking about the grammar but how the sentence is formed okay and the semantic is nothing but the when the any sentence is formed using the grammatical rule and their building blocks we under we want to understand the semantic means the meaning right so these are the some specific way uh, if any language has okay and the to this linguistic study okay it is very important to understand this language right so generally uh, the major building block uh, of any language is this like phonemes what phonemes then there is a call as a morphemes then there is a call as a lexemes then there is a syntax and the context okay let's understand uh, each thing uh, separately okay so when i say phonemes phonemes is nothing but the sound phonemes is nothing but the sound of a language right when you whenever you are in nursery or junior kids the first is the phonetic how each word to be sound or pronounce it's called as a phonemes right and with some expression so when i add the uh, sound with expression it is nothing it is giving the context okay what it is giving context so context is nothing but the expression context when i say context is expression okay so uh, we know that the standard english language has 44 you know uh, phonemes okay and each letter has some sound okay when i say morphemes morpheme is nothing but the meaning okay morpheme is nothing but the meaning of that language smallest meaning not the uh, larger meaning the smallest unit of meaning is called as a morphemes when i say lexemes means the structural variation in each word for example run and the running right both words having the same but you know each word is some has a variation one is a run and another is a running and definitely there is some meaning associated with it okay so uh, these are the some of the major building blocks of any language has okay now we will see what are the different application associated with it so when i say phonemes or i want to say sound then what are the nlp application is available one is a speech to text or we, uh, there is another application is the identification of the speaker okay so through sound i we have seen there are many uh, applications available through sound they can unlock their phone or something like that okay similarly third application we have that is called as a text to speech this come under the phoneme so here we can use the nlp application when i say for uh, morphemes and the lexemes right means the structural understanding okay or the small meaning then what are the application in nlp we have one is the tokenization right so this can be achieved through tokenization so these are the applications are available third is the pos tagging right this nlp application is available and the next is the word embedding okay in upcoming lecture we will see these uh, some like things when i say syntax so syntax we can use the ner technique that is name entity recognition parsing right and the relation extraction and when i say context we can use the topic modeling okay then uh, sentiment analysis 
okay and the summarization and the summarization so these are the things are coming under the application so as i mentioned these are the building blocks and related application in nlp is there okay let me fill bit up so um uh, yeah so uh, we already see some application of uh, things now one of the most uh, important is called as the uh, one thing that is um, ambiguity in the human language okay now everything is okay but we know that the human language is something very complex okay what are the ambiguities available first is the lexical ambiguity lexical ambiguity what are the lexical ambiguity for example let's say i went to the bank what is the sentence i went to bank so suppose this example i am forming and these are the some available but which bank whether the river bank or the financial gap bank so this is called as a lexical ambiguity second is the syntactic ambiguity which ambiguity syntactic one is a lexical another is a syntactic what is a syntactic i saw the telis i saw the man with telescope i saw man with telescope so when i say i saw man with telescope whether the man had a telescope or i saw man through the telescope this is a syntactic ambiguity third is the semantic ambiguity what is semantic let's say visiting relative visiting relative can be annoying can be annoying so visiting relative can be annoying whether what is the possible intention whenever you visit the whenever the relative visit your house you will be annoying or act of visiting relative is always annoying so this is a semantic ambiguity fourth is called as a pragmatic ambiguity so when i say pragmatic means what for example let's say pragmatic means meaning okay so let's say can you open window okay let's say can you can you open window so when you say this word request for action are you requesting or you are questioning your ability okay so when i say can you open a window are you saying to open the window or you wanted to question his ability whether the person able to open a window or not so this is called as a pragmatic ambiguity so why i am saying saying this ambiguity because it is very difficult right most human understand but machine can't understand so this is the major challenge uh, of any machines to deal with this kind of ambiguity right now less sometime before i mention in the earlier topic that how we can use the language as a data right how we can use the language as a data so we know that there are some rules associated with the language right so this data right we know that the language can be written can be spoken or the sign right so there are many methodology is available for example pos tagging NER, right? Parsing through which you can extract the data, right? From the sentence, and this data can be used for your further process. So, this way we can use the language as a data, okay? Whether it is spoken or written or signed, different, different methodologies available. I hope you, you are understanding what I am explaining till now. Now, let's go to the, our last topic that is called as a AI and the nlp okay so let me draw the picture here so that you can understand how nlp how the nlp is fitted with the ai so if you don't know for this i would encourage to visit my first lecture that i recorded some year back 
where i try to under uh, try to try to explain everything okay so let's use some venn diagram to understand so guys this is the ai ai is a very big set in this ai we, we are having machine learning this is the machine learning in this machine learning we have deep learning okay so i can say the deep learning is a subset of machine learning machine learning is a subset of ai but ai is not only the machine learning please remember there is a misconception that ai is a machine learning. no machine learning is a subset of ai deep learning is a subset of ai but when i'm talking about the nlp so nlp is coming here so nlp is a natural language processing as i earlier explained it is derived it is used machine learning as well as deep learning to understand the language now i hope you understand what is the relation between the ai and the nlp i already explained early nlp they are using the rule based system but when the machine learning and this deep learning comes they are use the ai power nlp now there are some easy tasks in the ai okay when deal with the, like spell checking like topic modeling or the text classification information extraction these are something the easy and medium task but when you are giving going for the hard task like machine translation or the document conversational agent like currently you heard about the rag you know the chat gpt you upload the document and then you are asking some related input this is are the very hard problem to solve nowadays it is possible because of the generative way but it was a challenging task earlier now what is the benefit uh, of ai uh, in the nlp okay when when we are starting using this uh, kind of system uh, uh, deep learning in the nlp what is the accuracy because earlier we had a rule base so let's understand what benefits the first benefits is the accuracy and the efficiency earlier in the rule based system the accuracy was very less but inclusion of the ai that is deep learning machine learning accuracy increase the second most important the scalability we learned that the word net was a small was a dictionary developed by some of the university but because of deep learning the scalability loose text you can impose so whatever the upcoming uh, deep learning model or the chat gpt model is coming okay they are increasing the context right the size of the model so you can impose huge amount of size third is the adaptability adaptability so what is the adaptability you can use different type of data now our current uh, gemini or anything it, it deal with the many financial data as well as the educational based data any type of data you can use okay so this is the benefits of the uh, ai and the nlp but there are some promising area okay some challenges what are the challenges the first challenge is the explainable ai x ai what is explainable ai means we wanted to understand how nlp is doing the decision okay because nlp when uses the deep learning or machine learning these are still the black box don't understand how they are doing so we wanted to do the interpretation so this is one of the challenging tasks how any chat gpt arrives to the some specific solution why it is summarizing only the while doing the summarization why it comes to only these words or these things so this interpretation is the still black box second challenge is uh, called as a multilingual nlp okay very few model are supported the only few languages okay so having model which supports different different and many languages this is the second challenging thing the third is the personalization what is that personalization so we want nlp to some kind of a smart search engine or social media platform still uh, it is still good but we want more personalized user experience through this nlp okay so these are the some challenges uh, which is related to the nlp now what is the future what is the future of this ai when talking about the nlp context 
So there are the three. One is the artificial narrow intelligence, which is also called as a big AI. Second is the which was the earlier. Then we have AGI, that is artificial general intelligence, or it is also called as the strong AI. Means you no need to do anything. Okay, everything computer will decide. You, you, you no need to say make the store or anything. Currently, we are in the era of first one that is artificial narrow intelligence. It will do only those tasks that you wanted to. And the third something era that is called as a artificial super intelligence or it is called as a super AI. This you can say completely replace the human. Everything. Okay. So don't stress a lot, but just want to say currently we are in this space. That is the weak AI, artificial narrow intelligence. This is something open AI has their views to make the artificial general intelligence and after that artificial super intelligence so i hope you understand at least the basic of nlp uh, what we have covered till now so if i want to just summarize we have started uh, let me just go up if you understand something this is what we have covered we started with the uh, definition of nlp then uh, uh, history of NLP, you know, so what are the different use cases uh, of NLP? Everything is uh, covered here. So, please, uh, if you miss anything, I would suggest go back, uh, you know, go back, listen again. And if you feel these contexts, contents are good, or if you feel that something to be uh, you require more, uh, please feel free to comment and don't forget to, you know, spread among your friend circle with everyone so that i'm motivated thank you so much we'll see uh, you in the next session thank you